Visayana City is a new cultural sector destination in the Philippines in an attempt to represent the values and beliefs of its community. The city connects the Philippines' central economic districts which are Makati City and Taguig City, providing different avenues for access. Having a lot size of 6,782,000 square meters and a population capacity of 500,000 residents, the urban planning of the city took inspiration from Paris's urban planning with its rotunda and representation of the Arc of Triomphe and a bit of urban planning of Bonifacio Global Center which integrates grid and circular planning. At the heart of the new city lies the sports stadium which will be the centerpiece followed by the Grand Plaza located at the east which creates the frame that set up the view, an open space where the community can relax and enjoy the provided recreational amenities. Encapsulating the sports stadium is the mid-rise to high-rise commercial structures which caters to the different cultural needs and representations of the country, ranging from art and clothing equipment to indigenous and local crafts. The outer core of the cultural sector is the residential zones that composes of different levels of housing. Each residential zone represents a contemporary take on Philippine urban planning along with the law of the Indies. Other sectors worth mentioning include the institutional sector in which structures aim to showcase the different cultural assets and belief systems present in the country, the industrial sector where energy and water work for the city are managed, and the transportation zone where residents can go in and out of the city. With that said, I welcome you to Vicina and I hope that you will enjoy the different features of the city. Thank you. Streets are envisioned to always have safe and pleasant routes for all pedestrians. This includes those who have mobility problems, sensorial problems, by prioritizing accessibility and inclusivity in the streets of the city. Materials like tactile pavements, ramps, and the like are present in each street type. The city's efficient network design of streets is focused on moving the people rather than giving in to car-centric design by separating vehicular and pedestrian paths while also putting emphasis on possible different systems of transportation, providing bicycle lanes and designing interesting street furniture for the city that can be seen and explored in every street. The boulevard promotes walkability and introduces alternative modes of transportation, such as cycling in these major roads. Pedestrian crossings are accessible and utilized for convenience. Other street elements are also provided, focusing still on the safety and comfort of the users. Center aisles with plants as a road divider, then lampposts and traffic signs and signals. In the downtown of the city, commercial streets are present. Downtown commercial streets focus on the relationship of the proposed commercial spaces with the pedestrian zone. This is to extend commercial spaces to the outside on the pedestrian level, providing active sidewalks and heightened chance encounters. It is a two-way street wherein wider pedestrian zone is provided, dominating the street in order to accommodate higher volumes of pedestrian traffic since it's a commercial area. One of the most exciting streets in the city are the shared streets located in commercial and mixed-use spaces. This is a pedestrian priority street that aims to better balance the interests of pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles. Street levels are equal to the pedestrian spaces and vehicle speeds are regulated to keep these areas safe. By creating an inclusive street that is sensitive to all abilities, Curbs were omitted and instead, greenery sublimely separates vehicles to the pedestrian zones of the shared streets. The residential area is placed far from the main access of the site to ensure residents' privacy but still near the important vicinities within it. Residents can freely roam safely around this exclusive neighborhood. Bike lanes are still present and the streets are much narrower compared to other streets, promoting intimacy and privacy within the residents in the area. The city also includes green open spaces to encourage outdoor activities and one of which is the Green Alley, situated in the middle of the residential area. 
the green alley can act as the residential neighborhood's noise barrier from the loudness of the traffic noise by promoting recreational, cultural, and sporting activities to the residents of the settlements. Agrivoltaic, the concept of combining solar panel with agriculture. With this idea, there would be more production that maximizes the existing land area. A greenhouse which serves both energy and food production will benefit the whole city. This turns the greenhouses into a powerhouse like to generate electricity. The solar panel modules produce solar electricity not only on the front side but on the back of the photovoltaic modules with solar radiation reflected from the surroundings. With an installed power of 194 kilowatts, the photovoltaic array can supply 62 four-person households with electricity. The allocated truck depot is where the harvesting trucks are parked. After collecting the crops from the greenhouses, it is sent to the processing area where it's cleaned and checked for inspection. Right after the inspection, the fresh crops are ready to be sold. Beside the market is a communal space where everyone is free to rest and enjoy the serenity of being surrounded by vegetations. Buildings with green roofs and vegetation are also incorporated throughout the power plant, not only to bring life to the spaces, but also to lessen the threat of urban heat island effect. Powerhouse, located near the greenhouses, where the conversion of DC to AC happens for the public use when reached to the city's electric wires. And while to be resilient to flooding, strategies like rainwater garden and bioswales are designed to be included within the vegetation that surrounds the area. On the other side, this is where the water treatment plant is located, where procedures happen to ensure that the water is safe to use. Clean water leaves the plant and pumped into the potable water pipe towards the city. After leaving the city, water travels to sanitary sewer pipe to the water treatment plant where it is cleaned and returned to the environment. This is capacity where the city's utility is established and guaranteed.
This home derives its name from the Dutch word gezellig, which means cozy, fun, or a nice atmosphere. A place where you can spend time with your loved ones or a warm feeling of togetherness. This home offers both common areas where the users can interact and personal spaces for intimacy and retreat. The second floor has the private spaces, a master bedroom with a walk-in closet and ensuite bathroom with two vanities. The second floor also have a living area, two additional bedroom, and a shared toilet and bath. On the ground floor is the living area and the dining area. The kitchen includes a pantry and open shelving. It also has a laundry room, a maid's room, a toilet and bath, and a guest room. R2 zoning is intended to provide for areas appropriate for a maximum of two dwelling residential units located on a single lot. This home is called Intim, which means intimate, warm, personal, and friendly. A 172 square meter structure that is both residence and commercial business. This structure expands into three levels. The ground level is the commercial area and on the back is the hallway that leads to the residence. On the second level is where the dining area, kitchen, living area, and other room are all located. On the third level are the private spaces, a bedroom, a master bedroom, and a bathroom. This dwelling unit also has a roof deck where they can do their laundry and other activities. So, so this is the this is the presentation for the residential zones. So starting with R3, the user um, naturally will wake up, use the bathroom, change his clothes, and prepare for work. After which, he has the choice to have breakfast in his own home or um, get outside of his own residential unit and have takeout for breakfast. So an example here is that he goes to work 
and after going to work he may have the choice to have a bit of leisure so an example is that he goes to the park so what we have here in the residential zone is to make sure that there are also amenities for the users such as a park or could be a gym or a um, multi-purpose area so after he spends a bit of time he will go back to his residential area and he may also use the third space to relax for a bit or even just watch the sunset so this residential area also focuses on making sure that the users do not feel so enclosed inside um, the structure itself compared to those other condominiums or mid-rise residential structures which is why the units also have a lot of ventilation especially once you step out of your own unit so now the user also has the choice to watch TV or do extra work in his work area and finally ends this day by taking a long nap Now for the R4 residential zone, um, it's a townhouse but the style of the design would be more of a row house. So it's a row house, townhouse type. So the user wakes up again, uses the bathroom, gets ready for work, um, heads downstairs just like the residential or the R3 user. He has the choice to have breakfast in his unit, in his town home, or he can have takeout for breakfast. So in another example, he goes to work, he arrives home, and for this case, instead of going to a park, maybe the user wants to just get home already, have his dinner, eat, and relax. Spend the rest of his hours before going to bed by watching TV. Now it's getting late, the user feels a bit sleepier now. He goes back to his room and uh, maybe if he has the energy to or if he feels like reading something he also has the choice to go to his balcony especially if he's the master of the house
over the past few years, living in urban areas has shifted significantly with the presence of the higher needs and the promise of convenience. Mixed-use developments represent the ideal lifestyle with a range of high-end infrastructure and amenities accessible to the residents. This building is composed of 30 stories surrounded with solar-controlled glass which is suitable for tropical countries and also incorporated with some concrete panels which will act as the sun shading device in order to control the sunlight entering the building. Created with curved pattern features while complementing the verticality on its design. The building also highlights its vertical vegetation which will also contribute to the overall sustainability of the entire structure. Looking at its street level, it is composed of separated pedestrian and vehicular access, lay-by area for public transportation, and outer public plaza before entering the building, having this water feature included, which could contribute in improving the air quality and as well as in reducing the noise pollution within the site. Moving on to the inside of the building, Ground level is composed of several retail shops, being accessible to the essential needs while providing comfort and convenience to its residents. Commercial level also features a food court area, wherein people will have an access to a wide variety of food choices inside the building. An access to office spaces were also provided, which consists of several rooms ideal for meetings, seminars, and other business functions also provided with a work-life balance from a combination of lounge and outdoor amenities. Moving on to the residential level, its lobby area is composed of a lounge amenity which will allow the residents to have an access to a space where they can enjoy their productive time. An infinity pool amenity will also serve as an accessible area for the residents to have a quick refreshing break during their extended stays indoors. This infinity pool also has its unique visual function, continuing to be a water fountain feature to the structure which creates a peaceful ambience while drowning out the distracting noises from its surroundings. And for the residential spaces, it is composed of one bedroom unit and an open plan of spaces combining the kitchen, living, and dining areas. It also offers a landscape rooftop garden incorporated with patio furniture and grilling area providing an accessible outer spaces for the residents. This mixes development will create a new horizon of experience in places that nurture what people value the most. City Triangle is envisioned to be a prestigious building, creating a sustainable quality of life for its people. In building different office spaces for the people and its users, generating prototypes to fit the space, and producing design inspired by Kenyang's bioclimatic towers, wherein it has various levelings for its own vegetation and shading, the massing of these buildings has that concept to a more sustainable and suits different lot types for mass production. Each building has its own prefabricated design to fit the lot type's characters. The first prototype for an office building is a corner lot type with two sides as firewalls and two sides exposed to the streets, being the largest of them all with about 365 square meters. 
Going inside is the lobby wherein it has a waiting space with two fire exits, one in here and also an access to two comfort rooms and also the elevators. So going up the office, the prefabricated design welcomes glass partitions to make the space inviting and also adds to the openness of the space. The second prototype is an inside lot type that's about 301 square meters with only an access to the front space of the building. Going into the entrance shows the lobby with fire exits and elevators on each side of the building. And going up shows the office space again with the glass partitions and the meeting rooms in between the fire exits. Then the last prototype, which is also an inside lot type that is also about 301 square meters but with an access to all of its sides. And going inside shows the lobby with elevators, comfort rooms, and exits on each side. And upstairs is the office space again with the glass partitions and offices in between the elevators and fire exits. The design approach intends to create a straightforward experience that displays the functionality of the programs integrated into the structure, applying modern principles with the tropical context in mind. It invites the commuters to this bus terminal, doubling as a space for transportation integrated with natural breathing spaces from the function courtyards within the structure to allow natural ventilation and lighting. Creates pockets of gathering areas dispersed in the terminal to reduce foot traffic of the incoming and outgoing commuters. The program's composition integrated with the structure derived from a computer perspective point of view in the Philippine setting, where the absence of terminal benches, emergency facilities, and components in a public terminal such as clinics, lactation rooms, restrooms, and etc. are not heavily prioritized. In response to this issue, the design for this bus terminal caters to, to these facilities and accommodates the needs and convenience of everyone who will travel. A massive trapezoidal inverted flat roof allows winds to penetrate within the structure which are supported by cylindrical pillars integrated with top lighting. A slick minimal design to emphasize the roofing as a major element to the structure. With its fewer barriers and more open voids, it is what it gives its own den identity concerning its surrounding environment in contrast to other bus terminals present in the Philippines. With regards to the allocation of spaces, the middle section of the station is where the core of the terminal is placed, such as the admin offices, ticket station, and passengers area. The clinic and the lactation room is, is also located in the middle, which can accommodate mobility in emergencies. It is near the drop-offs, parking area, and also in the passengers area. The bounded parking space for vehicles secures the safety of both passengers and means of transport. 
greeneries are also incorporated at this part to promote air quality and consistency from the other side of the station to another. These are distinguishable by numbers, colored lines of the safety of each individual and it can accommodate plenty of buses to avoid long waits and multiple destinations. Passenger benches and seats are comfortably arranged through the apartment seats in the safe zone of the base. Safety of ATM users weighs on the exposed design of the station. Even though it is placed in an open space, it still gives users privacy and safety. The word transparency captivates the dynamic views of workers in the workplace. The loft style of offices achieves the utilization and maximization of the spaces, especially to its ceiling height. Walking distance of demands considers the welfare of individuals on the terminal, workers and Passengers are able to access the source and common needs such as comfort rooms at any site they are situated because of the plate positioning of each room that breaks typical designs of bus stations. It is not only purposed for the functionality and activity but also for the convenience, comfortability, accessibility, and safety of each one another inside the station. Alright, trying to explain the concept. First and foremost, the train station is, well, not only a, a transportation node, but it also acts as a public space. That's why the main area of the train station itself, i.e. the ticketing and the assembly area, is on the second floor, separated from the commercial area on the ground floor. 
it's so that for people who don't want to uh, ride the train station could just opt out to use a commercial area or the park to uh, gather. Another notable feature of the train station is the living wall uh, where the panels are rotated 45 degrees to allow more penetration of air as well as light. It somewhat passively cools the building by cooling the hot air coming into the building. It stops there at the living wall or the surrounding trees. Now that the concepts are out of the way, let's see what the commuter first sees when they hop off a bus and gets into the train station. Now as you can see here, there's a Zen garden. The whole reasoning behind why there's a Zen garden is that when you're say commuting to school or work, uh, the first morning is usually one of the most stressful since of, because of rush hour. But with the presence of Zen garden, it may help calm down the commuters prior to getting into a train. But not only that, the presence of plants as well as the sun garden itself provides a soothing environment for the commuter. Another feature is of course the aforementioned commercial area. With the commercial area on the ground floor, say for instance if you're coming home from work, you can just ha go down and get groceries there. Or if you're someone from the neighborhood or nearby and you just need a cup of coffee, you can just go instead to the train station. Moving on to the ticket area, this is where you book your tickets, uh, basically. As you can see here, there's a waiting. You may notice that the chairs are being hit by sunlight, however, the glass here is basically switchable opaque glass, meaning that it could turn transparent or it could turn opaque. And of course, the area just before it going in and out of the train. Based on my computations patterning after the Bay Area Rail Transit, Light Transit, not consider adding chairs or a waiting area anyways because there's a possibility that there could be long delays or if there are people that needs to really lie down or sit down. Of course, to provide an area for the employees working in the train station, there are office spaces and uh, of course, employee break rooms. That's it in terms of my reasoning and justification for these design choices. Uh, I'm Juan Carlos Miguel C. Prado, and thank you for watching. This design approach intends to create a straightforward experiences that presents an excellent and reputable school of medical arts around the area. It is designed where the garden and an atrium is placed at the center while being surrounded by all the spaces so that it can be all easily accessible and be seen by students. This medical school is designed with a functional top deck park for students and teachers to stay and work. Another feature that is designed is that a small Functional open green atrium is also placed in the middle of the structure to encourage natural lighting and ventilation to enter. The program found in the structure is based on the other medical schools found in the vicinity of Metro Manila. The structure is a four-story building with a total lot of 1,200 square meters. The programs of the medical school that is placed in the structure is derived in a student's perspective point of view in the Philippine settings. It is where only classroom, laboratories, libraries, offices, that, which includes admissions, dean offices, and guidance offices, are the only spaces that are only being prioritized in medical schools. The small green open space atrium was designed to cater to the students' needs to walk around and possibly read or study under the trees. This, for, this is for the users to utilize its green spaces for a location where students also relax and possibly rest.
All offices are located in the ground floor which includes the dean's office, meeting area, a small office, bathroom, and also the admissions office together with the guidance offices. Each classroom is designed with the folding walls to each side to so either give isolation or combination of both classrooms. These classrooms are also found in all four, four floors with each classroom given size of 51 square meters each. The laboratories are located at the third floor to the fourth floor. It is strategically placed at the edge of the structure to cover a lot of space with storage area and other laboratory materials. This also adds a possible control of laboratory population for the classrooms. The roof deck pavilions were designed to also cater to all the users. It is somewhat on another location or a continuation to where the students, teachers, and mentors stay to relax, study, or maybe even have a wide view in the afternoon of the scenery. The library is located at the second floor, continuing to the third floor, which also shows that the library also includes the lounge where it shows not only the view of the outside and have a view of parking and other views of the city but also a few views of the atrium in the middle. The cafeteria is located in a separate building but there are bridges that connect to the classroom building and laboratories and to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is strate strategically placed in the lower left corner so that while the users consume food, two views may arise the exterior and the atrium for both first floor and the second floor. Rubico is an urban school dedicated to propose a fundamental concept that is building a child-friendly, open educational environment. The creation of vibrant outdoor learning with non-traditional interactive spaces are based on the principles of play and concepts of openness and flexibility inspired by the Lego bricks and Rubik's Cube respectively. A mirrored V-shaped layout with areas for light and air to circulate inside the structure were placed integrated with greenery to create a campus that has a relaxing atmosphere rather than being intimidating. The colorful facade creates a distinct character for the building that could pique a child's curiosity, splashed with four different colors, red for creative, blue for cognitive, green for social, and yellow for emotional. This is a reminder that children should never look at the same perspective as they are many ways to learn. Places for learning are translated as active classrooms that are mostly present on the ground level for kindergarten and passive classroom for elementary to junior high school students from the second to the fourth floors. Social corridors run through the whole campus in a design to give different functions for clear identity and these connect to stairs and ramps in the school for accessibility and mobility. Diversity is also represented through social spaces such as the school's library that are designed to have areas where children can freely read as they like. The cafeteria is also located at the center of the site to facilitate logistics and transportation.
And finally, a roof deck where it also doubles as a green roof and an activity area for the children, perfect for non-traditional ways to learn like gardening in their school garden or even physical educational classes upstairs. By exploring various educational demands for the kids, the initiative develops a variety of more engaging areas for younger pupils as well as calmer, independent spaces for older, more mature learners. In Rubico, the urban school, children are able to stroll, play, meet, communicate and discuss here, making learning a fun way of life. By designing a school fitting for a new type of city, the philosophy of empowering children of all ages is given the means by systematic creativity to build their own worlds and live in them, letting them learn and experience schooling that should never cease their imagination and curiosity.
We dub the museum Limbo to represent otherworldliness. Yes, the museum is meant to be historical and informative, but architecturally the goal was to portray grandeur and weight. At the same time, a confinement of the space. In coming up with the form, the shape needed to look heavy and raw. Parametric styles were established to add to the architectural design where the second step was to create openings, not just as entry points for the users, but for proper ventilation and access to sunlight. After that, it was a matter of distorting the form a little bit more and adding a second structure at the end to sufficiently house the number of spaces established. The lot is divided into two buildings, with building A being the main structure containing the following major areas. while these major spaces comprise of building B. The main design concept featured a mix of parametric and brutalist features, a popular style that was heavily used during the Marcos era, to which we translate that by using concrete finishes to contrast these wooden beams that are set up to be grid-like. After you're dropped off, you're greeted by the building's 7 meter main hallway, but because of the wooden beams, it limits the space to around 4.5. The hallway serves as an access point to the art gallery, where from time to time hosts art exhibits to support local artists. Seeing how this area was a much more public affair, it's why the area has such high ceilings and large window panels to be able to brighten the space. As compared to our martial law galleries that are mostly covered with solid walls, as we wanted the experience to be much more private. To showcase the events of martial law, we split its timeline into different galleries or halls, with the Hall of Beginnings being the first located on the first floor. Each hall represents different themes, as well as different exit points for better escape in terms of emergencies. Moving on to the Hall of Power, the redness of the room represents dominance and authority, something that was consistently seen throughout the Marcos turn. Lastly, on the third floor, we have the Hall of Adversity, which features a yellow hue to symbolize hope, a representation of what happened in the Edsa Revolution. Our final main space for Building A comes to the Hall of Heroes, a space used to commemorate individuals who in their own way stood against the Marcos regime. Moving on to building B that represents more grandeur than confinement, it also houses the museum's library as well as the office and administration. The site is located next to a huge park so vegetation and trees were planted as an extension of that, as well as to improve air quality. Which brings me to the end of my presentation on Limbo, a historical and contemporary museum based on the events of martial law.
Thank you for staying with us till the end as we featured all the structures present within Vezina, a new cultural sector destination in the Philippines. I hope you enjoyed and till next time.